Hey guys, welcome to the My Event On video tutorial series. Uh, today in video number nine, we're going to be covering the event tickets add-on and the WooCommerce integration. So let's get started right away. We'll make this as quick as possible. Uh, currently, I'm in the back end of My Event On. Uh, you can see here, and I'm going to quickly cover the tickets tab. Uh, you will not see this tickets tab unless you have the tickets add-on installed, which you can purchase at the myeventon.com website. Um, so let's cover this really quick. The general ticket settings here in the back end. Uh, you can see a couple options here. Show ticket purchase for only logged in users. Uh, stop sending ticket emails to buyers. Sometimes WooCommerce and our plugin will send um, an email uh, per the plugin, so you'll get two emails. And then also they may receive another email from PayPal stating that, depending on the payment method, um, that they've also purchased the tickets. So that could be up to three different emails, and this one may be a little redundant. So we've given you the option to just disable sending tickets there. Um, the default email and the uh, subject for the email there. Uh, here's the emails tab under the tickets, which you can set up the, the from name, the from email address, and the subject line. Um, pretty basic. If you want to edit the tip tickets email, you can go to the directory shown here and override that confirmation email. It's pretty basic. Uh, you should know some PHP or HTML to get in there to do that. Um, if you need any assistance, you can try to get us on our support, uh, but I can't promise that we'll be able to help much because we're always trying to update and fix bugs other than um, doing custom uh, development for you guys. I wish we had the extra time, but we just don't. Um, you could probably find someone pretty inexpensive to do that for you online. But let's jump into the event tickets here. I'm going to click on the events tab. I'm going to create a new event, and let's create something here. And we're going to call it uh, Porridge Lakes Cookout. And we're going to give it a quick description. I don't want to, I don't want to type anything else. So that's it. Um, we're focusing on the actual ticket here. So let's just set a date for the event. We're going to do the 24th of June. And we're just going to say maybe 3 p.m. in the afternoon till, uh, let's go with 11 p.m. Uh, time zone, I'm, I don't need to set that. It's set for my default. Um, location, I don't know. We'll just say Portage Lakes, Ohio. And it'll generate a Google Maps from that address. Uh, they should pick it up from Google, so I'm not going to worry about an entire address or lo latitude and longitude. Um, select an organizer. I'm going to choose myself. Uh, I'm going to choose an image for myself. Let's just choose my silly avatar I made there. It's going to show big there until it's saved and it'll go back to a thumbnail. Um, let's make it a, a, a light box pop-up interaction, the pop-up window. And here's the new events tickets um, section here that shows up only once you have the add-on activated. So I'm going to click that. Let's give it a ticket price of $25. Um, I, I don't, I'm not worrying about a sale price here or the SKU or the short ticket detail. Uh, manage capacity, I can say, yeah, we only have 100 tickets available. Um, it's not out of stock, so I'm not marking it out of stock. We can show remaining tickets. Let's say we're going to show it at 100 just to always show it on the front end how many tickets are available so people know. Um, you do have the option, like WooCommerce products do, to sell that item individually, So that meaning only one ticket can be bought at a time. Um, ticket image, let's throw this fake image I found on Dribbble on there. Ticket image caption, um, again, this will be under the ticket. I don't have any need for it, so I don't, I'm not going to put anything there. And allow customers to submit inquiries. Um, this comes in handy if you want to um, have a small form on the event card that gives your users um, their name, their email, and a quick question they can submit to you to ask questions about the ticket. So I'm just gonna put that there and show you what it looks like on the front end. Um, let's give it a quick event type, just our events. The fe featured image, uh, I'm just gonna use this picture by the lake since the event's called Portage Lakes Cookout. And we're gonna publish that. 
All right, now let's check out that. Actually, before we check it out on the front end, let's see what happened inside WooCommerce when I made that ticket through our event on plugin. So the product has been automatically created, $25. There's 100 tickets in stock. And let's go ahead and click on this to edit it. You can see here's the basic settings for any product in the backend of WooCommerce. Um, currently in our version of 2.3.5 event on and also the 1.1.6 tickets add-on, there is two brackets being inserted there. I'm going to delete those. Um, a lot of you have been asking, why is this on my email? Well, that's where it's coming from. It's coming from WooCommerce and our plugin. Um, it's just automatically being generated. We're going to fix that so it's not happening anymore. Um, with that said, uh, let's go ahead and show you quickly how to do a variation of this ticket with different prices. I'm going to choose variable product. I'm going to first, you need to create attributes for a variable product. So let's hit add. And we're just going to say ticket type used for variations. And we're going to say um, lawn seats, lake seats, and um, you know what? We're just going to do that. So we got two different types. I'm going to save those attributes. And now that we have those, we can create variations for those tickets. So I'm going to add a variation. This is going to be the lawn seat variation. I'm just going to call it lawn to give it a unique skew. Um, that can just be an identifier for whoever's handling your tickets or your, your management of the tickets. Uh, the variation for the lawn seat will be $25. And I'm going to add a variation for the lake seat which will be a little more expensive. Again, let's give it that skew to identify it um, if we need to for inventory or different things like that or for tracking. And then those seats are going to be $50. So now um, the featured image here, it's not necessary, but if you want an image on your product page or in the shopping cart, you do need to set an image there. So let's just set that ticket there like that. And then we're going to update it. If you need to change the product category for some reason, you can do that here. Just put uh, Portage Lakes tickets or event tickets, whatever you need to. Um, that's more for if you're going to have a products page with categories uh, separating your different types of tickets. Um, but in this basic example, we're just going to show you how it works quickly. I'm going to go to the events here. I'm sorry, let's go to the pages because we've already created that event. Let's go to our pages tab. And I'm going to add a new page to show this event on. So let's call it lake events. And these are only going to be the events that are showing our um, lake events. I'm just going to give the calendar ID lake. Um, let's just do lake events. Lake events calendar ID. Um, I usually use one word. Sorry. One word, but you can you can use no spaces here. It should be fine. If you do use spaces, it might break the short code, but um, I usually just use one word with a dash or two, I'm sorry, two words with a dash or just one word to identify it. This is mainly used if you have multiple calendars on the same page, it will separate the code so they're not conflicting with each other. Um, let's go down here. Uh, the only event category I have is our events, so I'm, I'm not gonna do anything because that's the only event we actually have in our system. Um, Everything else here is in the basic event on plugin, guys. I, I'm not going to cover it. It's been covered in other videos. Let's just hit enter, hit publish, and let's view this event and how it looks with the ticket on that page. So let's view the page. June 2000, or I'm sorry, June 2015. Here's our event I made. Here's the beautiful picture of the lake, a quick description of the event. There's my picture. I, I'm sorry, that is the event ticket picture. Uh, that is not correct. Um, I'll see why that happened. But in the meantime, here is our ticket section down here. Um, obviously, it says ticket section title. Um, I named it that for demo purposes. Uh, here's that cool little form, inquire before you buy. And then if you put your information there, they can submit that. I'm not going to do that because uh, I want to cover the tickets here. Here's our ticket types, the lawn seats or the lake seats. Remember, there's 100 in stock. And the lake seats, those are 50. And 25. So let's go with the lake seats. I'm going to add 
20 of those, add those to the cart. And then the lawn seats, I'm going to get 22. Um, these are not differentiated in the stock if you do not manage the stock separately in the back end of WooCommerce. You need to specifically call out how many tickets you have per the variations. Otherwise, it's going to use the total stock that you're, you're setting up initially when you do that. So I'm going to add those to my cart. My internet connection is a little slow right now. I had to switch um, my internet. But let's view the cart. And there we go. We've got the 20 lake seat tickets, and we've got the 22 lawn seat tickets. Um, let's go ahead and check out really quick just to see if those totals um, have disappeared. Um, there's my total of my tickets. I'm going to use cash on delivery just to complete this order and show you that the stock has been removed from the inventory of the tickets. As soon as this goes through, there we go. Order number, the date, the total, and the payment delivery method. Um, I would also add a note if, if this was my actual website selling tickets to probably tell them to print this page or to print this order confirmation. They will get an email, but it's always good to print this out. Um, let's go back and see if our stock management worked. I'm going to refresh this page. And let's order some tickets. There we go, 58 in stock. That's because I ordered uh, 42 tickets. Um, and I completed the purchase. The only way the stock is going to go down is when a actual order is completed. Um, it's not when someone adds it to the cart. It's not if someone has 90 tickets in their cart and they go to process the order and someone already ordered maybe 20, that order is not going to go through. Um, they're going to get a notice that they could not complete the order. So sometimes it's good to have that inventory management on the front there. Let's go to the back end and view the tickets that I bought. So this is more for the admin. If you go to the events tab, all event tickets, you'll see here my order 636 is it's processing. I actually completed the order um, in the back end. It shows processing. So let's check that out here. And I do have the QR code um, add-on installed. This will automatically give QR codes for those tickets. Uh, which is pretty cool. So they can, they'll get a QR code in their email. They can scan, um, or you can t give them the scan when they come to the event. Um, we can cover that QR code scanner in another video, but for now, you, you can see the back end here. The quantity of tickets is 20 for this ticket type. Um, the cost is 1,000 for all the tickets. It shows that zero of 20 of those tickets have been checked. Um, for instance, if I do check that in, it shows checked. Let's refresh that page. And there you go. It shows one out of 20 have been checked in. So you can keep um, tabs on who's checking in and out of your event. Um, if they haven't got their email, you can resend the e email confirmation. Uh, you can also send the ticket email from the back end again as well. So you can keep track of those. It is nice and secure because you do the, get that QR code, and that is an, an additional add on that we provide. Um, trying to think if there's any other things to cover for the tickets. I don't think so. Uh, the only thing in WooCommerce, if they do like a cash on delivery um, order, you will need to manually process that order um, to possibly send those tickets um, because it's not getting a fully 100% completed um, order until they're paid for. And, they're, they're not paying for them until they give you cash. So you may need to come in here and give it a completed order status. Just waiting for the internet to save there. And then you can also see like the different statuses over here um, for those tickets. You just need to play around, depending on the payment gateway and the actions, you, you need to set it up accordingly to how you're going to do it. So um, with that said, the WooCommerce settings are separate from Eventon, so you'll need to kind of go back and forth a little bit to 
get it exactly how you want it to be. Um, other than that, guys, that covers tickets, the majority of it. If you have any problems or questions, check us out on the support forum. Um, I will personally be there helping along with Sean and Chris. Um, that's it. Next time we'll uh, do something else in another video.